Hello again, my name is James Wong. Today we're talking about AutoCAD 2013, deployment creation and automated software deployments. If you have a lot of workstations in your environment, this video is for you. So we got a few items on the agenda today. First, we're gonna talk about network administration and deployment and go through some of the basics. Then I'll show you how to create a deployment of AutoCAD 2013 and show you what I consider to be best practices. We're also gonna talk about various distribution methods including scripting, GPOs, and SCCM. There's a few here, so you have to go through whichever one works best for you. So let's start with some basics. Deployments can be used for both network and standalone seeds with the goal of saving IT time. Once you create a deployment image, you no longer have to pop CDs and DVDs onto workstations. You just have to browse onto the directory and install. So if you're an international firm or larger firm, you know that you'll need multiple languages of a specific software. You can package each deployment with a specific language. One for English, one for Chinese, one for Portuguese, etc, etc. You can also have different deployments with different configuration on the same directory. For us, I have a deployment of AutoCAD 2013 Network and another for AutoCAD 2013 Standalone. This way, the same set of installation files can be used and you'll save yourself some server space. This is done by going to the Create and Modify a Deployment link in the directory you know, in Tools. So though the deployment runs silent, you can also trigger it to write a log file. This way, if something goes wrong during the installation, you'll know where to look. So you can see here, I already started AutoCAD 2013. Click on Create Deployments on the lower left-hand side. My deployment configuration name, I'm just going to call it AutoCAD 2013, 64-bit, Network. My administrative path is on my DFS, Microsoft.local slash deployments. And it's going to run in silent and log files on temp folders. Click once for the network log file and it'll show up to show the, show the fields. Click on accept for the end user license agreement. Click next. You can see here, this is where you're going to put your serial number and product key. This is a network version. My serial number for my firm, I'm going to place here. And the product key is also found in the order subscription center. Software coordinator and contract manager will have that. My network license is maintained via group policy, but I'm just going to add this. This is a distributed license server. I have two of them, both in the East Coast. I'm just going to add both of them here. Click on add and click on next. Before we click on create, expand so we can do a little bit of configuration here. And the default includes Express Tools. That's good. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. You can install additional support content. I'm just going to use everything default here since this is for my training rooms. If you have specific search paths and file locations for your firm, most commonly for printer configuration, this is where you want to include those files as well. And scroll down. You can see that you can add additional files to the installation directory. This is good for tools, third-party tools. You need to install configuration files for those tools. This is where you want to put these. Just scroll down for additional options. User preferences here. I actually disabled the welcome screen at startup because it's just annoying for me. And I'm going to leave those shortcut and parameters by default. There's no service packs, so you can forget about that. And just scroll down, communication center options, we're going to leave as is. In the customer error reporting, I'm going to include computer names. That way if something goes wrong, you know which machine to go back and fix. Just close that and click on create. So right now it's packaging the prerequisites such as .NET, Faro, and other utilities before it actually packages AutoCAD 2013. This usually takes a couple of minutes and it will include AutoCAD Inventor Fusion. Once it's done, click finish. So now that we've packaged the deployment image, let's talk about distribution methods. The first is batch files, which are basic scripts for installation of software, service packs, and extensions. It includes commands and switches, options and flags that control the behavior of installation. Only users with administrative permissions can run batch files. 
The next distribution method is actually the simplest and is considered sneaker netting without bringing CDs and DVDs. Administrators only need to log into the workstation and browse to the installation directory and click on the installation shortcut. This is actually the best method for firms since it includes any prerequisites needed. Before you begin, it is highly recommended to turn off any background software to prevent any software installation issues. This includes turning off any antivirus and any anti-spyware software. Group policy is the third method and is suitable for many firms, large or small. It is actually my preferred method and is currently in use in our offices right now. You can apply group policy objects to any OU in your domain and assign software to the computers. Upon reboot, the computer will install the software, ensuring everyone has access. This is the preferred method for many firms since it automates the installation process. You can also deploy software using Microsoft SCCM. It is a great tool for larger offices with multiple locations and multiple distribution points, ensuring that all your workstations have the same software package. One caveat to SCCM is that AutoCAD deployment does not install prerequisites like the Microsoft.NET framework. Before you make a SCCM package, you should make sure that the deployment image is tested outside of SCCM to verify that the package components were created properly. The last distribution method is actually by using disk imaging. Before I continue, I have to tell you that this method is not recommended since I've seen more than enough clients with Autodesk software components failing. Not only that, Autodesk product support will not support you if you're using imaging tools. It is actually better to use Microsoft tools such as the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit in conjunction with Autodesk Deployment Tools to set up new and existing workstations. So I hope everybody found this video helpful. If you find yourself stuck with deployment issues and you're one of our clients, feel free to give us a call in our support department. Our phones work and we don't use automated answering systems. Be sure to check out our blog and YouTube channel for more tips and tricks. Until next time, this is James Wong signing out.